Good morning, Currencies are on view yet again, this time for our sale, June 21st. Summer is here, it's lovely and warm outside. It's Saturday morning I'm talking to you from, which is why I'm in with short sleeves. And um, the gallery is a bit quiet, we're on view, because it's early in the morning though, so they'll all come in later, near 11 o'clock. Anyway, it gives us a good chance to have a look around. What's in the sale on 21st? How about this pair of paintings? Lot 650, portraits. This sort of Puritan looking fellow has an inscription on the back saying Pope Ishmael. Make of that what you will. And his companion, this chap here, uh, has no label at all, so we don't really know, but a little bit scrubbed in the paint. Still, nice old things. And they're in at modest money from memory, they're in at around about sort of three to 500 or something. So they should do all of that, if not more. Running around the gallery, let's go and see what else we can find. More paintings by people like Roland Sudderby up there, lot 660. We've got a um, Thomas Bush Hardy here, sort of classical fair, the watercolour there, lot 659. Further on, the scrapwork screen here, in the sort of Edwardian manner really, with these perhaps even a little later, with these black and white um, scraps rather than the high colour ones you usually see. I mean, not the most fashionable thing these days, but lot 179, there it is. It's, uh, it's in usable condition, I think we can safely say. Great big book list here, George III. Um, we have to take the ceiling out to fit it in. Uh, lot 177. Um, period Mahogany Library bookcase. You look for features such as these sliding shelves rather than sort of pins to hold them in and what have you, gives an idea of the age. Um, big commodious thing, lot 177. I think it's in about 1,500 to 2,000 pounds. So I like this painting, lot 657. Not Apparently unsigned, it's around about 1900 in date. The sheet music here down the bottom, which has been partially scrubbed away, which may have concealed the original artist's signature, just says Adelaide at the top. Um, so uh, that's lot 657. From memory, that one's in about three to 500. Now, we're going to have a look at the smalls. Don't look over there, that's all sold by the fantasy studio. So, into the land of smalls, what have we got? Well, a whole mixture as ever, from sort of shy horse pulling a, a gypsy caravan, faux tortoise shell lidded toilet sets, Edward Wall's hat box, there we go, how about that wig box? Let's have a look, 432, there we go, it's his wig, look at that, rather smart, Ravencross Law, wig and robe makers of Lincoln's Inn, the wig looks to be in uh, fairly good order. That's lot 432, something a bit different. Still plenty of people in the legal profession. Got a few quid to buy a sort of nice decorative thing like that. And I like this, lot 436. The sort of bijouterie cabinet. It's um, <clears throat> ormolu mounted with tortoise shell, which as we all know is actually turtle shell. And um, it dates to around about 1900, 1910. Probably continental, looking at that lock with the round pin. Um, nice little thing, that. You know, need a bit of a buffer. Lot 436 yes. hasn't got its estimate on it yet. I would say that should make a good three to five hundred. Morning. Elsewhere, good morning, Alex. Down here we have uh, Copeland Spode, big old dinner service here. Uh, little, oh, I'm trying to see. There we go, there's a clearer mark. The pattern is Rockingham pattern. Copeland Spode, Rockingham pattern. England. Now, here's another tip for the day, full of them this morning. When you just get England, it means it's 1890 to 1910. As soon as you see Made in England, it's after 1910. Good to guide that. Little tip there. Yeah. Oh, give me away all my secrets. Great big marmite pot, no idea why, but it's there. Um, otherwise, uh, Stephen Bone, interesting artist. A pair of woodcuts. I forget the title for that, I have seen it. Something depressing. And um, a view of um, a lock. There we are, the two together, lot 551, not big money, they're sort of 60 or 80 pounds, but just a curiosity. As always, Chinese things such as this uh, little Chinese pot here, modelled as a fruit, a loquat or something like that, with a bat, that's a bat upon it. A little water dropper, I guess, lot 451, doesn't look to be overly old to me, but um, the Chinese make their own minds up. They, they, they know more than we do, or at least they, 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 they profess to. Uh, so, further on down here, what am I looking at? Well, lots of these Chinese brush pots of varying ages and quality. Most of them are relatively new, 20th century. There's a whole load of those scattered throughout the sale. And then, what else have we got? Well, clock sets, there's a few of those scattered about. This has got a big ticket estimate on it. This is lot 243. 
It's, I suppose, late 19th century French, bronze and ormolu, ormolu being gilt bronze or gilt brass, um, and um, has got an estimate of £1,500. So, uh, sort of, yeah, probably all the money, I would say, to be honest, but uh, it's, it's, make your own mind up. Maybe you think that's a bargain. Then we've got to go around the other side, so I'm going around a long way. Um, what am I passing? What's in here? Oh, look at that. Gosh, Gosh. there we go. That looks to be uh, Indian. <clears throat> White metal, we call it, which means it is silver, but it's not hallmark, so we can't call it silver. It's actually stamped 900 deluxe. So there we go. We know it's deluxe, and 900 means 900 out of 1,000 parts are silver. Um, so uh, there we go. That's a rather fancy-looking thing. Looking for a lock ticket. Uh, not finding one. There we go. 411. Thank you. There we go. So there we go. That's that. We're still setting up, and it's all a bit of a shambles, as you can see. Well, it's not a shambles. It looks like a shambles. It's actually very organised, trust me. Uh, I'll go over the back, see what's around here. Oh my God, I mean, this is sort of blind viewing here. This is what you get when you come in the cellar and to view. You think, what a garden you've got, and you wander around and see what they've got. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing. No, don't like that. I'm not going to pick that up and show you. It didn't seem that exciting. A few nice little bits of silver here. There's a classic sort of Georgian mug. That is round about, marks are rubbed, but I think that's about 1804 or similar. Um, nice clean condition, that'll be about £300, what I would say. That? It, uh, lot number 742, that is, 742. Uh, should you be serving cake this weekend? Yeah, there's a nice big slice of cake, or you could, if you're very posh, you could flip your burgers with it on the barbecue, but uh, it'll get a bit hot. That is, um, it's not English. Roger may well have tracked down where it's from. It looks perhaps German or Eastern European to me. Lot 745, and I'd say that dates to about 1900, but... He may have added more information on it. Nice bowl here. I like this. Look, 749. It's um, what do we see underneath? It's Tiffany and Co. Oh, I've got a good eye, haven't I? Sterling silver, so it's Tiffany silver. Um, that's going to be by the looks of it, 1900, 1910. It's got that sort of Art Nouveau flavour to it with these nice floral motifs. Did it have some kind of rim, liner, or lid? Well, maybe there was a sort of mesh for a rose bowl or something but uh, perhaps it just took ice and you could drop your caviar in. I don't know, nice thing that. Anyway, look, I, did I tell you number like 749, I have you? So, silver, that's silver, lots more silver under there, all sorts of bits and pieces. I have a quick scan under here and I'm seeing the usual, I tell you every week, medals and things, I like these. I mean, they're out, of, well, they're running out of time, but look at this, lot 510. This is Japanese uh, shibe armour work where the hard shell and other hard stones and tortoise shell and things are set into ivory. And just on the one side, hinges open, put your visiting card. So when you go calling on people, you would extract your card, present it to the maid or butler. They would go and present it to whoever you were calling on and they let you know whether they were at home or not, let you in. And interestingly, this is signed as well. Look, there's a signature right down the bottom there. It's in Japanese, I cannot read it. Um, there's lot 510, it's a bit stained. There's some cracking at the back and we go back to this whole ivory issue of it will be banned one day. Um, legally, you can sell something if it had 10% of ivory. Well, is this 10%? It's just veneered. So how much of that is ivory and how much, I mean, the coating is all ivory, but inside, inside it's wood and stuff. I don't know. It's all yet to be solved or dictated to us. Anyway, lot 510, don't know the estimate. Why well, would say, I think it's a rather nice thing. I'd say that's sort of a good couple of hundred pounds, probably. Uh, so I need to put it back where I got it from. There we go, otherwise they shout at me. Right, so over here, oh, that's nice, isn't it? Look at that, lovely. Lot 235, creamware. Um, so English pottery, round about 1780, 1800, perhaps. I suppose it could be as late as 1820. Hand-painted flowers and then lovely ale written upon it. I mean, the only problem bit small isn't it for your ale but uh, there we go um, 235 nice thing like that um, it has a friend lot 236 which is another creamware piece unmarked most of them were occasionally you see it um, with Wedgwood is, is the main guy uh, attributed to inventing it Godspeed the plow on that one a harvest type jug with the motifs and a lovely look at the look at the handle lovely molding to the handle that's lot 236 estimates will be on the website as ever there's a tiny little camera here. I think we do. Look at that. That's a, a micro 234 MYCO, CRO, MYCRO, micro camera there. Lot 234. Something with a novelty, I'm sure. Otherwise, there's raw Worcester. There's 
drinking glasses, there's miniature scent bottles, there's a, a, a musical, I would guess, automaton type box. That, um, oh look, they're going to dance, I'll bring it over. Oh. Are they going to, yeah, oh. Um, you had music just a minute. We did have, well, of course, tradition. Okay, so there's nothing going on inside to see other than the movement. So it's not a musical jewellery box, it is an automaton that has the mechanism underneath. And there we are, it's singing, it's playing away, they're dancing away, it's lot 220. And that's got to be probably German, I would think, and around about 1890, 1900 or thereabouts. Kind of fun. A little novelty. There we are. There's always something interesting here. You don't have to look too far to find it. Lots of costume jewellery, lots of mix, lots of watches under there. Jewellery's locked away in a strong room. Roger's been let out for the weekend or he's locked in. I'm not sure which. Either way, we're not going in there today because it's all sealed up. Uh, so what else can we look at? We'll have a knife box. But this one has been converted into a letterbox, country house letterbox thing. Uh, probably better than the usual conversion to sort of stationery, but it's lot 286. It's coming back around for a, a second time, lot 286, because it's been changed and people like them in pairs anyway. Otherwise, I'm looking at some Paul Pottery, I'm looking at some Tunbridge Ware, I'm looking at Moorcroft, I'm looking at Sev. It's all here. So, lovely good mixture as always. And again, I think the sales have been getting a bit bigger recently, and this one is no exception. Usual drill starts at 9.30 in the morning, viewing Friday, Saturday morning, Monday dev. So we'll pop into the warehouse and see what's there. So here we are in the warehouse, and it's, it's heaving, I'm afraid, even this furniture section, because it's not actually officially on view till next week. We've had to fill the aisles with goods, because there's so much coming in at the moment, but that's good news for, for us, and good news if you want to find lots of things to buy, I guess, as well. Anyway, what we can see, look at this, lot 48. Great big um, hammock on wooden frame for the garden. Lots of pots, lot 47, nice little lot of terracotta pots. Lots around that, 46. Look, we've got some, what are these, zinnia daisy type things? I don't know, that must be lot 44. Two little stone square planters and a, and a strawberry thing, I guess. You've got a miniature bird bath. You've got a rather sad looking Staddle stone there, lot 42. So yeah, some nice gardening things. How about this then, lot 39? Um, keeping something in check, that'll uh, keep your, your big woolly plants in, in order, lot 39. Bonsai type pines here, lot 10. It's, we're practically a garden centre in fact. You could grow, uh, grow your runner beans up those. It's, um, it's marvellous, all sorts of really nice gardeny bits. There's a bench here, it's not the most attractive benches, but still a bit different, lot 8. Won't be expensive, I'm sure. Deck chairs, lot 67. So, yeah, and even down here we've got these sort of boring things, wow. which uh, I'm sure you could come up with something marvellous. Our, our buyers are very inventive people. You could hang them from a chain and grow clematis up them. There's my tip for the day. That is lot 21. So loads of fab garden gear. Uh, otherwise, and, and ferns, you know, these have both got whopping great cracks in, I warn you, but uh, lot 26, nice pedestals. Um, big composition birdie bath thing so loads of stuff square square upright plantry things more of these it's it's gardener's world it really is look look at these this one, lot 74 great big they're huge they're quite big yeah but you ram them into the ground a bit so they come down a bit well look at those splendid you, and they're actually they're a near pair i would say they're not an exact pair because one is ever slightly wider than the other but um they're very close and they've got slightly different wiring to the sides so um but still pretty splendid. So amazing load of garden stuff. Uh, then we've got some sort of beadery mar furniture. How about this? Look at this, lot 76. This is proper furniture. It's all closed up. Can I get in and find the key? Apparently not, not in time to show you. It's just going to take too long to find that. Oh, are they all drawers? They're all drawers. I was expecting a secretary. There we are. Anyway, this, this sort of Biedemar piece here. A lot of money was paid for that back in the day. I think the vendor paid about three and a half thousand for that. It's in at around about six to eight hundred now. But if Biedemar is your thing, that will be for you. That one does look clear. This is a later one, lot 78, in the Biedemar Manor. Other those bedside chests, lot 79, the sort of Biedemar stroke deco in style. I'll get out the way so you can see them. But going around past yet more gardeny stuff. Here we are, here's a, here's a secretaire, which is locked shut at the moment, lock 114, um, rather smart. Love, look at the shimmer to that satin, quite remarkable. Uh, 
glowing condition. And then down the line, brown chest of drawers, bow front chest, nice little low boy here. And look at this, this is, um, what are we looking at here? This has got one, two, O, oh, and uh, it's not a period one, it's, it's a little bit, it's sort of later in the manner of, but very nicely made, like one, two, O, oh, you know, it fools the eye initially, it doesn't work for close inspection, but still, one, two, O, oh, nice little thing that. So all sorts of goodies, uh, come along and see us as ever. We'll be launching the summer fine sale imminently later this week just putting the catalogue together this weekend so and that's got wowzer stuff in it so um we'll talk to you about that in due course but uh, be prepared because that's a real goodie but i think this is a real goodie in itself in its own right so uh, come along and see us saturday morning i know we're all busy gardening and what have you but um 10 what time is it five past ten Pretty quiet, so and it's cool in the warehouse, so it's it's a nice time to come and have a quick nose round and then go and enjoy the rest of your weekend. That's my advice to you anyway. So uh, there we go. Have a good one, and um, we'll see you on the sale day, either in reality or virtually. Thank you.